Right, welcome back. Why have I got three empty tubs in front of me? Well, because it's experiment time. We've got three different types of sump bricks or sump plates to test out. First one, Continuum or Brightwell Aquatics brick. Very, very light. In fact, this one only weighs 640 grams. Forgive me, I don't know what that is in ounces or pounds or whatever for you guys in the US. It doesn't really matter, but basically it's quite light, very airy. Now, as far as I can tell, this is made of like a ceramic slurry, which is poured into a mold. It has aragonite dosed in here, and it also has sulfur dosed in here as well. Now, aragonite will keep the pH up a little bit. It'll help to harden the water. I don't know whether they are, but in an ideal world, those particular elements that are dosed in here would be fused into the structure so that they don't actually dissolve, they don't get used up, they don't weaken this structure. It's not the hardest of structures to start with, so if they aren't fused in, this could be a short-term solution. In fact, I've looked at a hell of a lot of reviews. Although people say it does reduce the nitrates, that seems to be short-lived before these bricks disintegrate. Apparently, that was a bad batch that came out a while ago, a long time ago. And as a result of that, I've actually waited two years to buy this brick. I think two years is enough time for any company to sort out any potential problems and create a good product. So I'm hoping that this will be a good product. It wants to be because in the UK these can sell for up to 60 English pounds each. These come in a very nice box. So they are packaged well. And according to the information on here, one brick will provide nitrification for about a thousand US gallons, which is 3,800 liters. I personally think it has no chance whatsoever, but that's what's claimed. And apparently it has a usable surface area of 71,000 square feet. Again, surface area measurements are... I mean, people just pull them out of their arse. Surface area. I tend not to mention surface area. I just basically say that the biohome has a good usable surface area and it's suitable for bacteria to colonise. Getting into the figures is really just a nonsense. You can make up whatever you want. We'll go on to the next company's idea of a brick or a plate and I've got issues with the surface area calculations of that as well. That's why the biohome brick that I'll be showing you at the end, we're not even going to bother trying to estimate what it is. Now a strange thing happened when I ordered this. I ordered it off eBay. I won't give the name of the company that I ordered it off, but there was two different bits of paper arrived in the box. One of which was basically just advertising the other items that they had available, which are variants of this. We've got the little cubes and we've got the plates. Um, and this one says, they are able to turn your filter into a massive filtration unit with the ability to last up to 50 years, biologically, or three to five years for nitrate removal and one to two years for phosphate removal in any fresh or salt water environment. That's good, but at the same time, this other bit of paper that arrived with it seems to contradict what has been said in the first one. Plates and bricks and rocks. When using the plates, bricks or rocks, please position in a place where you will not need to handle or move it. Have it where heavy detritus is filtered out to stop it clogging. Fair enough. Once in position, the product has such a vast honeycomb of holes, 85% air, probably is about right, that the product becomes like a sponge and will become soft. Therefore, moving the product when it is used is very difficult and should be avoided wherever possible. Keep away from any plants or any other items that may rub against it in water movement. One thing says it lasts 50 years. One thing says it's like a sponge and you can't move it. One of those isn't true. We've got a third thing to throw into the mix where this brick's concerned. Because I actually communicated with the person who I bought this off, 
I said, look, it's basically for a test. At which point they seemed a little bit worried. Um, and they sent me an email. I, I'm not going to go into the full specifics of the email. But it ends by saying, a certain person has confirmed that the independently carried out tests were after four years of research in the product with various material combinations and cost an extreme amount of money. If you're spending an extreme amount of money to develop something, it better be bloody good. This, I am expecting the most of if it's had an extreme amount of money spent on it and it's going to last 50 years. This one should be the cat's pyjamas, as far as filtration goes. That is test subject number one. Test subject number two is a pretty new one. Maxspect Nanotech Bioblock. This one is made, as far as I can tell, from very, very hard, small, round ceramic beads possibly held together with some sort of resin. This one is presented even better. The box of this is beautiful. Packaging is again beautiful. You get two blocks. They're very heavy and they're very very hard. They do feel a little bit slippery though which is maybe down to the resin holding the stuff together. I'm not sure. Again this one the surface area reading ultimately means nothing. The bio block has up to 1,080 meters squared of surface area. Whether that is true or not is anybody's guess. Um, the results the people get will speak for themselves. But I do like what they've tried to do with this brick. This, this is a very tough structured thing, but it's also porous as well. Tiny little ceramic beads. And according to the box, two of these plates will be suitable for a freshwater and marine aquarium of up to 2,850 litres or 750 gallons. Again, that, I cannot see how that could be possible. As far as processing ammonia, nitrite and nitrate goes. It, but that's what they say. One worrying thing on the edge of the box though is the bio block should be cleaned or replaced every six months for optimal results. Um, that really should never need replacing. As far as cleaning goes, don't do what some people suggest online which is to soak it in bleach. That will basically just kill the chance of this ever supporting bacteria. Just give it a quick shake in water. Get the muck off the top. Don't worry about the internal structure. The internal structure of this one actually looks pretty good. You would have to expose this to extreme filth for it to get totally clogged. And God's sake, do not replace this every six months. If you've spent what, somewhere between 26 and 32 English pounds on two of these blocks, you don't want to be replacing these every six months, so just ignore that bit of advice. I can safely say that. And I can also safely say never ever subject this to bleach or anything as far as the filtration goes to bleach. There is a reason that bleach is used for cleaning toilets. It shouldn't be used for cleaning filters. So that is our test subject number two. Test subject number three is a new one that nobody will have seen yet. That is a brick which is made of the same material as the Biohome Ultra. It's also made as, of the same material as the Biohome Ultimate, but this one hasn't got the trace elements in. It's got a few in, but it's got none of the ones that actually change the colour. And we don't add all the trace elements to this one because the colour goes all messed up. It's such a big, heavy brick that the colour just cannot develop all the way through in the kiln. Now in a similar way to the to the Lego brick style of um, Continuum or Brightwell brick, we've castellated the top of there, which basically allows one brick to be stacked on top of another. We've also put three holes through it, one, two, three, which will allow water flow through. So the core of the 
brick should still get water flowing through it, albeit very slowly. And we've added six little holes here, which will take a frag plug. And if I can find any frag plugs, I'll poke one in just to show you. Uh, where have I put them bloody things? There you go. So if you've got this one on the top of your stack of bricks in your sump, you can put your coral frags on the top of there. If the coral comes off the side of those frag plugs and lands on the media, it grows way better than it does just on these little ceramic frag plugs. So ceramic just does not grow bacteria or coral as well on it as sintered glass media. We should really make frag plugs out of the biohome material, but it's too fiddly, it's just too small. These plugs are too small. So that's test subject number three. Cost of that will probably be around about 30 English pounds. For that, you're getting roughly 1.2 kilos of media. For the max spec one, which is somewhere between 26 and 32 quid, depending on where you buy these, for two plates, you would get 710 grams of material. And for the Brightwell brick or the Continuum brick, for anywhere up to 60 English pounds, you would get 640 grams of material. Obviously, the weight of these things has no relevance as to whether they are good or not. The structure is important and how receptive they are to bacteria is important. How long they last is important as well. Oh, I forgot to mention the recommended amount that each biohome brick would be suitable for. Now, we work on a full cycle being the processing of ammonia, nitrite and nitrate. If it's only ammonia and nitrite, that's half a job. It doesn't really mean much. From 10 years plus of good feedback from all over the world, people in different sort of situations, different water, different stocking, that's enabled us to give the following recommendations for the biohome products. Normally stocked tropical tank, it would take roughly one kilo of material to achieve a full cycle. For a heavily stocked tank, it could take up to two kilos of material. Because this brick is a little bit bigger, and slightly more dense in the middle of it than the Biohome Ultra or the Maxi Ultimate, which would be our previous biggest versions of this media, it should be suitable, each brick, for about 150 litres of a normally stocked tank. That's a world away from what these other two are promising, but from the amount of feedback, which is literally thousands and thousands of bits of feedback we've had on the biohome material over the last 10 years, we know that is correct. I can't vouch for either of these ones. I didn't have a hand in the development. I haven't personally received any feedback on them. I think the amount that they think it might treat is possibly based on how much surface area they think might be there, but I don't know. I honestly don't know. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just fire up the little USB microscope that's attached to my computer. The pictures on this won't be perfect, and it only zooms in to 300 times, but that is enough for us to see what the structure of these various medias are. I'll compare that to existing types of media, and you can basically just see what it's like. I'll give you my impressions of what I think, and you be the judge of what you think of the structure of these materials. Okay, this is the Continuum Aquatics or Brightwell block. I'll just put it on so you can see that there's no shenanigans. There you go. That looks like it is exceptionally porous. Obviously it's made of tiny little particles stuck together, but a lot of those tunnels do link up. You've got places where there's bubbles and there's no tunnel link up, but for the most part those tunnels link up. I'll just move it around a bit so you can um, get a good appreciation of what it's like. Bear in mind, anywhere that isn't a tunnel, i.e. isn't black on here, 
basically isn't a usable surface area. Bit of a crack in there. I hope that doesn't make any difference to the strength of the structure. We'll find out in the final test though. Okay, this is the Max Spec Nanotech Bio Block. As you can see, the structure of this one is totally different. That is entirely different. Here you've got really tiny, hard ceramic beads. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what they're stuck together with. It looks like whatever's sticking them together is actually coating them because they're really, really shiny. I don't know whether that will affect how the bacteria takes to them or not, though. I'm not sure whether you can see, but more or less in the middle of that picture, we've got something that looks like, oh, I don't know, almost like bits of resin stuck to it. So it could actually be stuck together with resin. Again, I don't know enough about this one, but the structure of that is actually very good. I really like the look and the feel of this, although it does feel very slippery. Uh, good media tends to feel rough. This one feels slippery. However, tunnels are there in their abundance. You know, I mean, this one is, you kind of describe this as one as being macroporous, whereas the Brightwell brick would be microporous. Now we've got one of the biohome bricks. And this one is basically just a mixture of microporous and macroporous. The particles are all different sizes because it's basically just different sized particles of sand. And that creates a very varied internal structure. Okay, because a lot of the particles used in the biohome block are white, it's reflecting a lot of the light from this microscope. So I've just turned the light down and that's allowed us to see all the different cavities. Obviously we've got a mixture of microporous and macroporous. That one in the middle would be described as macro. That's a pretty big one, surrounded by microporous. We've got a variability of particle size used to make the media. And that just creates a very natural surface for bacteria. It's basically just sand stuck together with powdered glass. So it's, it's all available to be colonized by bacteria. And here's a red brick that we did. Uh, we're not going to actually supply these red bricks because the color doesn't develop properly. As you can see, it's gone more brown than red there. I'll try that. There we go. Get it focused. Yeah, you can actually see that a little bit better than the light one. The light one was a bit difficult. That's basically the structure we're after. Microporous and macroporous. I.e. little holes and big holes. Right, the next test for these will be the porosity stroke suitability test. And what I'm going to do to test that is use this turkey baster. Some water that I've stained with a blue dye. I'm going to put it in each one of these and basically just see how well they suck it up. You know, how receptive they are to the water. If they suck the water up quick, then we know that they've got a reasonably open structure. We know that they can draw it up and we know it's quite porous. All right, I'm going to start with the Brightwells one. We're going to drop 20 millilitres in at a time. I expect to see this one absolutely blast up here. Okay, so we've got a hundred mil in there, and is it going up? It doesn't appear to be going up very fast. I'll leave that for a while, I'll just put it to one side so you can see it in the frame, hopefully. Hopefully it will go up whilst I do the next one. This one is the Maxpect plate. Again, I'll put 20 mil in at a time. I have no idea what this one's gonna do. No idea. Oh, 
hundred. Uh, bloody hell, that one's not doing anything either. Alright, I don't know why that isn't sucking it up. I thought it would. So we'll move that one to there. Bloody hell, this test isn't going very well. Okay, the biohome brick. Again, I'll just dump 100 mil into here and see what happens. Five. Right, okay, so I can see that one is doing something. Tell you what I'll do. I'll add another hundred milliliters into each one because the lower the water, the higher the what hydrostatic head needs to be or hydrostatic draw needs to be to pull it up. So if I add twice as much water, hopefully that should help these different medias draw the water up. Okay, just a running commentary on this. The max spec one actually seems to be repelling the water. Well, you can see there, it's not drawing it up. It's possibly due to the stuff that coats the ceramic balls. I don't know. As I say, it looks like a resin and it feels waxy. It has like a waxed finish. I honestly don't know. Anyway, we've got the Brightwell's brick. It has soaked some up. So it is getting there. This is obviously going to be a long-term test. I may just have to turn the camera off and come back to these. Uh, the biohome brick. It's gone up. Oh, what? One, two, maybe three and a half inches up the brick. Again, it's going to take a long time to pull it all the way up. see how far it's gone up there. I'll just turn the bright well around just in case it's gone up the back of there. Not really. The max spec one. It's still more or less just repelling the water. That's, oh, that's a really unexpected result. Hmm. Right, I'm gonna leave these half an hour or so and we'll come back and see how far they've got right now let's have a look it was half one when I started this and it's now quarter to two so after 15 minutes this is what we're looking at max spec seems to be actively repelling the water I'm not sure how that can be so hydrophobic it's literally repelling the water you can see the water beading on the top of it it is holding some, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to be, well, I don't know, it, it, as I say, it just looks hydrophobic. The Brightwell block, eh, it's gone up a little bit, about an inch on the front there. Probably a little bit more on the back, maybe an inch and a half to two inches. And centimetres, oh, inch and a half. So it's gone up about inch and a half. And the Biohome brick appears to have gone up about four and a half inches or so. Uh, what's that in centimetres? Yeah, just over ten centimetres. So about four inches. I'm fully expecting the rate of draw to slow down as it gets higher with all of these because it's much more difficult to draw a column of water up the higher you get. We'll come back to it in another quarter of an hour. I've actually just gone round the back of that biohome one and I've noticed that on the back it seems to have sucked it up a lot more. That is considerably higher, so how high is that? Uh, 16 to 17 centimetres, so that's over 6 inches. Just in the interest of fairness, we'll turn this fella around. Yeah, still inch and a half. Still bugger all. Right, we'll come back in another quarter of an hour. We'll start with a max spec one. It's still actively repelling the water. 
see it beading on there. The Brightwell brick hasn't budged any further. The Biohome brick is actually wet on the top now. So basically that's the test over. It's drawn it all the way up. Okay, now we're just gonna go out to a dropper test. I'm basically just gonna drip water onto the structure. Oh, some of it's going in. Yep, some's going in, some's beading. All right, this is a max spec plate, so it will accept water to a degree. It does soak in, that's good. Now we'll try the Brightwell brick. Again, that does soak it in. So it has got holes in it. You know, that draw test, or the porosity test, where I was expecting it to really rip up there when I had it standing up in the die, was a little bit misleading. The structure does accept water. Now because the original biohome brick was totally saturated with water, we've got a new piece. And obviously that soaks it in very, very well indeed. That's actually the first time I've tested the brick form of biohome to see how fast it would draw the water up. But every other type, you just dip it in and it draws the water up. Sand is exceptionally receptive to water and also to bacteria as well. That's why that particular media is so successful and why I rave about it and why I got involved in the development of it and why I sell it. But that shouldn't cloud my judgment on the other two because I bought those, I'm effectively a paying customer. So <sighs> the receptiveness to water disappointed me with both of those. But when we dripped the water on top of them, they both demonstrated that they are porous because the water disappeared. And what that means is that all three types of media that we're doing the tests on will accept water when they're fully submerged. Obviously, only one was receptive enough to actually draw the water up. As I mentioned right back at the start, we want something that's receptive, we want something that's porous, we want something that is hard wearing. So the very last test we're going to do will be a wear test. And the results of this will actually be in a future video because I'm going to let this run for as long as it takes to start seeing some wear on at least one type of the media. Now I will be checking the wear tests of these medias daily because it's actually set up where I work and I work seven days a week so I can check it every single day. Here's how we're gonna do that test. Right, hopefully you can see what we've got going on here. We've basically got a little 450 litre an hour pump that's spitting water and air out at each of these different types of filter material. So here we've got the max spec plate, here we've got the biohome brick, here we've got the Brightwell or Continuum brick. The pumps are exactly the same distance from each material and each pump is 450 litres an hour. The inlets on the air is fully opened up so they're pumping exactly the same amount of water and spitting exactly the same amount of air. And I'll just try and zoom in on the biohome one just in case anybody thinks that that's spitting straight through the hole. It is not. In fact, I'm going to raise that up a little bit more so it's spitting right in the middle of there, right onto the material. I don't want anybody to think there's any shenanigans going on. There you go. Hopefully you can see that's spitting right onto the material. It is not blowing through the hole. Likewise, that's blowing straight onto the brick. And that one is blowing straight onto the plate. 
and they are all approximately two inches away from the pump outlet. So we'll just let it go and see what happens. Just a quick note on these, the first two, that's the max spec one and the bio home brick, they sank straight away, right to the bottom. I didn't need to fanny around and position them, they basically stay in position. Obviously behind them I've got a couple of bio home bricks just to stop them being knocked over. Not that the pump is that powerful anyway, but I thought I would just stop that from happening. I want the pumps to be on these 24-7. The Brightwell brick, I had to actually weigh this down in the bottom of the tank for about an hour. And I've had to put a brick on the front of it as well. I've kind of had to sandwich it just to stop it moving around because there is a lot of air bubbles in here. And unfortunately, that indicates that a lot of the surface area in here is not accessible. If there's air bubbles that can't get out, the water can't get in. But luckily, enough water has got in to allow it to sink. Now, the reason I'm using a pump that is also blowing air is to get sort of like a buffeting effect. It doesn't just want to be water. It ideally wants to be air, so it's going bam, 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 like that, constantly, 24-7, against the media. That should give me an accelerated wear test. I haven't got time to, you know, have a gentle flow of water going on to each one for months on end. Because, I mean, the likes of the max spec one, and certainly the bio home one as well, I'm not expecting to see any wear on them at all. I know the Brightwell one, there has been a lot of reports of them just crumbling apart and wearing very badly. But I want to test that for myself. As I said at the beginning of the video, I bought this brick two years after I first started investigating that brick. So that's enough time for them to sort it out and solve the wear issues. This test will prove if that has been done successfully. Right, I will link to all three types of media we've taken a look at today in the video description and also in the pinned comment. If you're interested in any of them, just check them out. Thanks for watching, see you next time.